Yeah, yeah. A little bit noisy out here this morning, but today is um, today is the uh, second of June. Yeah, it's the second of Sunday, and uh, so um, on Thursday I had my immunotherapy injection, and uh, it seems that uh, with each passing, uh, you know, procedure with chemo and immunotherapy, it gets harder and harder. So anyways, I'm having a really hard time. <laughs> but anyways, I should introduce myself to people who'd never heard me. My name is Ron Haskell, and uh, I live in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And I do a vlog, and I have small cell carcinoma, which is actually not of the lung, but are surrounding the lung, which causes pressure, so. Anyways, I'm going through chemotherapy since March, April, and uh, now I'm down to the end of it, so. Anyways, I wanted to share the garden this morning. It's so pretty. The birds are singing like crazy this morning. And, uh, of course, you have to excuse my weeds. There's a lot of sticker bird grass going up and a lot of other things, you know, love lies and bleeding and different amaranthus that I just, I'll pull it as it goes, as I get my energies. <laughs> but anyways, I guess we know that. We do. Everything looks really good. I have a cat on my foot. And he's, if I take a step, he takes a step. I take a step, he takes a step. <laughs> you know how that goes. So there's another cat in the house, a new cat. Uh, the little one that we, I told you that came in the house and Jeff took care of his arms and took him to the vet. Well, yesterday was his appointment for um, getting neutered and getting his uh, shots for uh, leukemia shots and, you know, all that. So he's in the house with a cone on. And uh, our little one, Tobit, the little red cat, he's taken well with it. So it's their friends. Look at how the Shasta daisies look now. So as the heads go like this, I need to cut, I need to deadhead this year and see if I can get this, this um, to produce more. Because if I just let it just flower out like this, this will this will be all that I get for the rest of the year. And that, that was okay, I mean, last year having flowers, but I'd like to have extended flowers. Anyways, um, I missed out on a day yesterday. Um, I went to bed. I was up all night after the shot and everything. And uh, I, don't know, I, I don't know how I missed the day, but I missed Saturday. And uh, I was in, I went to sleep, at, finally got to sleep at 4 o'clock in the morning and slept till 11 a.m. And when I got up, Jeff was feeding the cats and the dogs. And so then we had a quick lunch and I stayed up till 2 and then I passed out again. And um, I um, woke up at, um, oh, 9 o'clock last night, 9, 10 o'clock last night. There's Oli. Oli, Oli, Oli. There's a lot of cats here now, isn't there? <laughs> Suddenly. There's a black cat right there. Can you see him? I'm sitting right there. Right there. Yeah. And uh, that hollyhock looks really, really pretty. Looks very southwest looking with that cactus sitting there and those big pink blooms. Yeah. So I do believe that I am getting uh, lemons. I have been watching them. They, you know, they keep blooming. It just won't stop blooming. and It just keeps popping off blooms and clusters of blooms. There's some blooms down here and there's a bloom there. And then here's a little cluster over here. And uh, so I've been watching for the little formations and it seems like these little stems are forming. So I don't want to jinx it, but I definitely want some lemons. It's time. So do have some beans to go in the ground and those are my bell pepper some dahlia 
and then some flowers. I need to get those. But look at all these wonderful, uh, these uh, castor beans that I started this year. So I started castor beans. Yeah. So I see, I go off on tangents. So as far as my chemo treatment this time, it was, it's was it been really hard. My eyes feel like they're bugged out right now. And last night I was having these aura sensations where everywhere I looked I saw this this circle of, of light, of color and light that lit up any anything it's, I looked at. So it was all so dramatic. <laughs> it was just incredible. And But my tongue is swollen, it's sore. Um, my throat hurts and then of course every muscle feels like it's been punched like a rock'em sock'em robots game you know where you punch his jaw out yeah so my whole body feels like it's been punched oh this is really pretty um, right along the sun side of where the sun hits this vitex and uh, it's blooming now so it's just it's doing a beautiful color so this is that bonsai see and we'll trim it up, you know, or we, I will trim it down um, this next fall. So, yeah, let it grow. But it's doing beauty. It should be in full sun, so it would just display all over. And see, right now it's not displaying over here. It's just displaying over here. Like this is the, this is what a, a non bonsai one would look like, but it's pruned. See how it reacted in the pruning process. Yeah, very, very beautiful. Yeah. See, I think I see colors differently now. <laughs> the camera just does not catch the essence of color. I don't really think so. <laughs> because what I see through the lens and what I see through the, the especially the, the video that I post, it doesn't look anything like what my eyes capture. It's so beautiful. It's a shame. It's nice to see that my oak trees are just pushing up. Look at that. Just pushing up. And those are just little acorns that I stuck in a pot. And got two of them. I actually got three of them. I don't know where the third one went. He kind of dissipated. And I think there's some, some inoculation that, that most of these type of trees have to have before they can really establish themselves correctly because of the bacteria in our soil. But thankfully they took and uh, they're huge. Yeah, eventually they're going to block out the apartment complex. It's not a complex, it's just apartments. <laughs> it's three buildings. But yeah, it'll block it out. And the fire bush over there is blooming. And I got my first dahlia bloom and it's so dark. You know, I wanted to move it. And this is an old dahlia that I grew last year. And I have some new ones coming up, but I uh, wanted to move it because it's way back here and nobody can enjoy it. How can you enjoy it? So, of course, that's where I want to do watermelons. I haven't started them yet <laughs> because the chemo just threw me back. But isn't this beautiful? Look at the color and the depth of that. It's just so rich. And what's sad is um, I don't have any sunlight yet. But once the sun is, because see, like even right now, we're under some sort of shade, <laughs> cloud cover. There's kind of pollution in front of the sun. It's not really a cloud. That's not a cloud. That's pollution, whatever. And it's blocking the sun plus this tree. But what a beautiful color, huh? Yeah. Now see, we'll get a lot of blooms. It's going to be, it's going to be stunning. But it should have been over there. It should have been over where we sit, so you can, it can be enjoyed. Sure, there's a lot of noise at this early in the morning. Of course, I don't know what time it is. It must be pretty early. It's a Sunday, and this oleander is lighting up now. But uh, here's the firecracker. Look at the colors, the color uh, depth that it does. And from a distance, it really lights up. It's really pretty. I mean, it's, it, it clashes with the pink. <laughs> it does, because it's more of an orange, but it's very interesting, an orange-red. 
I mean, it is very, very red. And the cannas are blooming now. There's three, two spikes here, and there's one already opened. The cannas in the front disappeared. I don't know what happened. Along my bedroom window, all that whole wall of canna, they just completely disappeared. This is a separate vitex. It came up as a weed, and I just left it go because I wanted it to block these apartments as much as possible. But now it's turning into a big monster like its mama. <laughs> Yeah. So all this penstemon, you know, is going to bloom pink, but it's going to want to fall because it gets so heavy, the bloom heads. So I'm trying to think of how I can wire it all in, like weave it in so that no one knows that it's weaved in <laughs> and it won't fall. I need to do that, figure it out. I don't know. There's so many things I want to do that now I find myself, you know, just knocked down last night you know and then you know missing Saturday and then I was up last night till 12 30 then I was back in bed again and I slept until 5 30 this morning so I missed a whole day and Saturday just completely disappeared and uh, of course I'm miserable because I'm I'm going through body sweats you know the full, whole, whole full body sweats and and it's like having a wedge through me, you know, it's just, chemicals are very, very powerful. I guess they know what they're doing. So this is all Jerusalem artichoke. Yeah, this is my baby Mimosa. He's just a little baby. Yeah, he's just grown up. He's a child, a little baby child. He's pretty. So this is that, uh, this is a wild desert, um, um, Oh God, why is my brain not thinking? Globe mallow. And I do like the way it opens up its big orange faces, you know, and it gets very fiery. And so I leave it, even though it's kind of trashy. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't go near people's windows, but I have a Rebecca there blooming. Yeah, finally. The avocados look good. They'll do good. Now I have to bring them in. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure, but I might have eggplant because there's some seedlings coming up. And so, and I got my first cucumber bloom. My first cucumber bloom. So, and see how the cucumbers now have relaxed themselves away from the um, cosmos? See how they're relaxed? They've pulled themselves down. They're going to start trailing down there on the, on the ground. They're just going to lean right over. And so um, this allows this cosmos to grow up tall and nice and bushy and get some bloom. So we'll have flowers plus fruit. That'll be nice. What are you saying, Oli? What are you saying? So this is a nice little walk. It's probably two videos. I'll have to fuse it together. But at least now I'm, I'm getting, it, getting it together, putting that, being able to do that. I want to... Now that I have a, a, a cell phone, or I call it a cell phone, it's a iPad thing, whatever. Now that I have a phone, I want to take pictures, you know, and do collages and, and that sort of video where you collage a bunch of pictures together with a little bit of music and you get to see a little bit of the world. Because I think that when you can capture a picture, you can capture color and light and expression better than a video. Videos just don't, I don't know about videos. So all of my trees have been seeded with wildflowers. So there's, there's California poppy there. There's um, something that's very interesting. I don't know what it is. There's, I'm not familiar with all these little plants. So here too, you can see I just tossed a bunch of, of wildflower seeds. Yeah, some I'll recognize, but that looks familiar. <laughs> and then, yeah, so, and it, what it does is it also cools the feet. Uh, it forces me to water them more often because they're tender. But it, 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 it cools the feet of the trees for, for our purposes in the desert southwest. Certainly. So having wildflowers. So we're still, we're just hitting June. By the end of July, all of these flowers should be throwing flower. 
and that'll look really pretty. I think it'll look really pretty. And of course it'll get taller and it does uh, run the risk of having like insects eat the bark and stuff, but I've had so far so good. But here's my tomatoes. Um, I let the love lies and bleeding glow grow through and it's gotten really big. What are you doing in there? Be careful, there's babies in there. <laughs> but um, some of them got really thick. They really did. I don't know why it's t this year was an explosion of love lies and bleeding everywhere. And see all these stalks will start growing big tendrils. And I'll try to keep it away from the, each tomato, but it's keeping it cool. And there's enough sun and you can see we've got tomatoes going here. Coming up. This, these two, the diagonal ones here, I think they're maybe late fruiters because they're barely, barely putting on any sign of uh, flower, but wanting to put on height. So they're competing, I guess. And I have some marigolds in here now, some zinnias in here. Yeah, so it'll be colorful. But these will, these will be neat. If it gets out of hand, I'll start chopping. Like, see, this guy's too close. He's actually growing through the tomato. He probably should be removed. And I never had the heart to cut this Shirley poppy, even though the sun dried it. And I, I noticed that the, the, the stem was still alive. So I hosed off the old leaves and all the tops dried out, and then now look at it blooming again. This isn't it kind of pretty? The color scheme of the, the pink and then the lockspur. But look at the dried leaves. They almost look ferny. It's interesting. So it keeps doing that. It keeps blooming now. Just like an ever-blooming thing. Yeah, it keeps putting up more, and there's a bunch more coming up. Yeah. It's fascinating, I guess. It's kind of, it, it looks antique, and yet it's still blooming. <laughs> it looks dead, and it's still blooming. And then we have the little lockspur. Now I gotta clear this lockspur out of here so that Ruella can get, get to growing. Woo wee! Oh, see, I'm having a rush. Oof, full body. Wants to throw me on the ground and get dizzy. Because I was leaning over. Let's look at our peppers. Never mind the neighbors. So, here we go. They look pretty good. Don't they look bushier than the last time I showed them? I think so. They look taller and bushier. Yeah, they're establishing. Now, once those bell peppers get a little bit bigger so that they can handle it without getting stomped on, they'll go here. And so I'll have bell pepper. So all this all be peppers. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? The yarrow. Yeah, it's very pretty. I've been trying to water my grapes a little bit more because it's been, you know, we have had zero rain. I'm telling you, there was a big storm two weeks ago that came up this way and it hit Dona Anna. There's a little mountain ridge right over here in front of us and uh, Dona, where Dona Anna is and uh then it went straight to the mountains over there what are you doing hon yeah they're talking to you you know how to come over here so <laughs> but we haven't had any rain not at all so it's been since december november december that we've had any significant but you can tell i've had no rain my grass i can water it all i want the only reason why it's growing around the trees is because I flood those, you know, I fill it up like two inches worth of water inside each furrow. It's amazing. It's a wonder that things can survive here, but they just go into this dormancy. And once the rain comes, watch, this whole yard is just going to turn super green. I should be thankful that I don't have to mow so much, you know? And of course the fruit set is different here too. Some years you have it and then some years you don't. But then I'm noticing the years that the trees don't fruit, whether it be pecans or any other fruit trees, fruit and nut, is when they put on significant growth. So like my apricot this year really put on the, on the girth. 
You know, I really, I really hate cutting apricots, pruning them because they, they sap out, you know, and that's not healthy. I don't like it. So I just assume let them naturally form. So give him space. So he has. And this is just for pollinating purposes, these two. Because he requires a pollinator. It's the only way I got him to fruit. And last year it was the best fruit. I still have some free... It's not... It's not. It's um, sun-dried. And I use it in recipes. It's very easy to do that. So these cosmos here... I guess because those others are in a better soil. <laughs> Over here they're not as growing. Growing as prolific. Hey, you made it. Yeah, you did. See, they're a little bit smaller. But I, I put some mixed flowers in there. Don't go in there, it's muddy. I put some mixed flowers in there and you can see my sticker bird grass that I have to pick through. But um, who knows what'll show up. But uh, there's some big spike and then there's the um, cosmos. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll look nice. But, you know, I did it in the fall last year and it was perfect timing and they even bloomed before the freeze, which was nice. But now that we're making it more of a garden setting here. The only reason is this is like an outlet for my sewage that comes from the house. It's right here the, where, the, where the clean out is. And so rather than have it get covered in dirt, I covered it with these bricks and rocks and decoratives and the bird feeder. And I never hardly watered over here because I didn't want to mess it up. But now that I realize that it's such a permanent, you know, this little tree isn't going to hurt anything. And it's, no. We're gonna we're gonna make it a garden. Yeah. I still have some. Um... Oh look! I told Jeff to come out and check, and now he's already lost his cherries. They're drying up. Yeah. He did that last year. I didn't get any cherries. Yeah. Well, I went out there and they were all dried up because you didn't eat them. He wants me to put them in a bowl for him. <laughs> He's been better about taking care of himself. I'm not going to take care of him. I'm going to try not to take care of him anymore. I have to start taking care of myself. I mean, I don't get paid to be here. This is my reward. And so, I have a, I have an appointment on the 4th to have a phone interview with the SSI to see if we can get me on some sort of supplement. Yeah. So I can get on my feet, so I can have a life. And whatever I put in and whatever I call for, that's all I want. I'm not going to argue with them. I'm sure it's not much. <laughs> but whatever I put in was what I put in for my safety. I'm certain of it. I'm certain that was the premise. So uh, over the years of my working with W-2s to W-4s and doing taxes, that sort of Social Security should be... Um, applicable I would hope but I haven't earned money I haven't earned income since 2008 that's a long time yeah that's a major uh, post-traumatic stress you know and it was I mean I had to destroy my livestock I had to destroy my whole life because because of selfishness because of selfish people and then it just got worse and worse and you know and then one incident after another and then drama 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 and whatever in life well that's what leads us down the road isn't it yeah the road to perdition <laughs> yeah so perdition means everlasting if people don't know that it's everlasting okay so however we want to perceive it it's everlasting you should wake up either to uh, everlasting life or everlasting contempt. And uh, I can hear the contempt in so many people's voices. I can hear it. I can... It's very heavy and it's, it's, it's very depressing and it's very violent in, in its own expression of I'm tired and I want it to end sort of thing. Yeah, where me, I, I'm anticipating the, the new season, the new season, the new season, the, the um, restoration, the, the experience of what um, 
It's almost like the accidents that happen. I mean, isn't all this just an accident here? And it's so beautiful. And the colors are just, just draws me in. So I haven't got any spikes yet, you know, bloom spikes for my glads here, even though I fed them so well, but they're getting fat. So they're going to hold out for a big summer bloom, I think. <laughs> and then the love lies, and then the dahlias here. These are poking up here. They're kind of getting hidden. I should give them more light, but they're okay. And then there's some more Shastas. So we got Shastas here too. And there's, there's a little spiky going on here, a little spiky going here. So we get some flowers. Yeah, on the Shastas. And the love lies are actually in front of the grapes too. So when they grow up tall, like these guys, cause you can see the, the trunk on this thing. See the trunk on that thing? Look at that. I mean, oh. Going all the way up. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a taproot. He really tapped into that mulch, that, that compost. Yeah, so, uh, but that's gonna look pretty and it'll support some of the grapes and kind of give them more shade. Yeah. So I haven't started my Lysianthus seeds. I was gifted Lysianthus seeds and I love Lysianthus because of this next round, this round that I'm facing of chemo. So I, I need to get through this. The last time I think it was like seven to nine days. And this time I might have to go through a whole full, you know, 10 days or more of, of uh, this body expression. Uh, oh my God, it's, it's too heavy sometimes. And uh, then I can focus on that. Yeah. Yeah, it looks so sweet here. It's so weird to see all that green and all that dry. It is, usually it's all green. <laughs> I'm just covered in cats. There's cats everywhere. Because they know it's safe, don't they? They know it's safe. You stay, you guys stay here. So I, we do have some bad news regarding the dogs. You know, um, Dargo, the youngest one, was 13 and he just turned, he just turned rancid. He uh, started attacking Rudy and it was vicious and he was posturing and he wouldn't stop. It went on for, God, almost, three months and Rudy was just in a mess and uh, then uh, we put we had to put Dargo down because he's not dog friendly he's not dog friendly at all and he was turning on us you're full of scabs you are you're full of scabs been fighting yeah so uh, now now Rudy Rudy the oldest um, I guess he's going on 15 or something He's in a, some sort of dementia state where he doesn't—he doesn't seem to notice any, see anything properly, and uh, he barks continually from the morning to night, um, and it's just terrible. And uh, he wanders back and forth through the night, and he's now taken to defecating in the house, shitting in the house, wherever he is. You know, it's like we're cleaning up after this geriatric mess and then Kimi has gotten to the point where she can hardly lift herself when she sits down and it's end of life time it's end of life time she's 14 he's 15 Dargo was 13 so they were right in the same age so it's time it's time to let them go and since they're a, they're a, they're Sheba they're purebred their life expectancy wasn't ever meant to be that long because that's how breeders, you know, that's what happens. The mixed bred dogs, they can live for years. My first dog lived to 17 years. But Rudy, can he last another two years? He's not, fu he's not functioning properly. No, he's not. And uh, while he's happy and healthy and, and as healthy as he is, uh, we'd rather let them go at this point, so. It's going to be about, Jeff looked into it, and uh, it's going to be about $300 for the pair. Just because I'm not burying them, you know, and um, I don't want, we're not going through anything like, you know, ashes. We don't want their ashes. No, none of that. So, uh, 
Um, yeah, that's going to take place pretty soon. I don't know when. Jeff will have to set it up. It's when he's prepared emotionally to handle it. But then look at all these kitty cats moving in everywhere, you know? And they suddenly there's a whole other realm that seems to be taking place. And uh, so now there's the new kitty in the house, and we call him uh, Mimo. Mimo. Like finding Nemo, but with the M E. M E M O E, I guess. M E M O E. Yeah, like a Mo. So his, his name, first we called him Mo, and we called him Mini Mo because he's so tiny. And so, and then it came out of my mouth when he came in the house the first time. I said, No, it's Mimo. Finding Mimo. And he has a very pathetic cry, so, but he got, he got neutered yesterday and he got his shots. And so now, now he's in the house with a collar and, uh, he's adjusting and he's going to be inside outside. So he's not, he's not, he's not, he's going to be allowed to go outside again. He's from the outside. He's not chipped and he's not tattooed and they didn't cut his ear, but they neutered him. So he's going to have a cool, a cool life. And he's a cool cat, so... Yeah. Where well, these guys all got their ears cut off. Well, no, actually, this one right here, Jeff calls him Patches. And uh, he's been around for about maybe over a year. But he would never let us near him. He lived under the house next door, across the street. But he'd come for food. And then suddenly one day I reached over and started touching him. And that's when he broke open. And he's just been so friendly, but he's intact. And the other black and white one, the old man, the one we call old man, he disappeared two weeks ago. He hasn't been back, so. And he was intact. But they have big territory, so he's doing his business somewhere else. Yeah. What a change, huh? I was really a devout dog person, but now we're just watching over for these guys because. What kind of life do they have? What happens when a person moves? Because all of these are a result of um, um, a catch and release. So they catch them, they spay and neuter them, and then they release them where they caught them for the purpose of um, territorialism, to prevent other cats from coming in the area. So this prevents the wild ones, the, the, the intact ones, from taking over and reproducing. So the territory is those who don't have children. But the children show up, don't they? Those little kittens. <laughs> they show up anyways. Because, yeah, because that guy's got a whole bunch of cats over there on the other side of that house behind him. They live under. And his wife just died of cancer. Yeah, and she was the one that loved all those cats. So that's, that's interesting. So some may be moving around coming around that's okay it's no big deal it's the end of the world take care of the living the living word exists and it it generates uh, beautiful things beautiful things I'm glad that I'm able to see the world the way I do at this point in my life and even though I lost my family and I lost my most of my friends died and uh I still consider Jeff a friend, you know, always. And uh, I believe that this is this is part of that. Uh, this is part of that. Uh, the restoration of it. If you've sinned and you've fallen short, now's your time to step up. And it's not to step up as righteous to be a hypocrite, but to step up and do the right thing. And, and to admit and, and to not deny what was before that was so lost and so fallen. No, but you can rise above it, not hide it. Don't let it haunt you. Don't let it, no one should ever use anything against you ever. If you can rise up, that's righteousness in its own form. We all have the ability to change. We do, and this is that time, so I guess this is his expression upon me for all these years. Yeah, which is okay. It means I'm accepting things. 
That means I'm forgiving. Which is good. It's a good sign. I mean, I... I guess I'm, I'm not a good measurement of it because I'm sick. Because I'm going through, um, through chemotherapy and stuff. And the immunotherapy. I still say the immunotherapy is what really kicks my ass. Where the nurses swear that it's the chemo that kiss, kicks everybody else's ass. I don't know. I don't know why I have to be opposite, but she did tell me that protein, uh, protein eaters, uh, people who eat meat, can get through this a lot easier. And I'm not a veggie eater, I'm a meat eater, so. And I did well this last, the last 21 days, I thought I bounced out of it real fast. But this, this time, I guess it's just only been, what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, we really can't count Thursday, but... Anyways, it's only been three days. Yeah, five more days of this. Oof. It's very difficult. Yeah, it is. And, um, of course, I'm doing laundry now because I have to wash all the linens and I have to wash everything all over again. And oh, When this is over, I have to tear up the bathroom and get up the tile floor from all the splashings and leakage and oh this is terrible this house is falling apart don't know how I'll ever get it done but who cares right you're full of stuffs you need a brushing I need to figure out how to take care of a long haired cat <laughs> I don't know what to do we cut his mats off of him and that worked out real so he doesn't have any more mats now you can but he needs to be brushed I think you need to be brushed. Yeah, because you're full of stuff. <laughs> Too fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I, I enjoyed talking. I enjoyed uh, visiting and sharing. And I hope everything works out, you know, on my end. Especially supplementing myself with the SSI so I can at least get over-the-counter medications and I can help with bringing in better food because I'd like to be able to walk. I can't tell you how many times I wish I could walk to the grocery store and just purchase the things that I need, but I don't have the money on hand. No, I don't. So I don't earn any money, so I don't have it. And uh, yeah, I hope that works out. Who knows? Though, you know, I know the world is pretty messed up and I know that the crooked nature of evil, you know, I tell people that evil rises up so that evil can judge evil. So it's the bad, the wicked, that have to judge each other. We shouldn't judge them. We should step back and let them judge each other. Because what they do is just reveal themselves and their, and their truth and they reveal themselves as hypocrites. So they'll all be removed. Yeah, they will. Yeah, by the dragon. <laughs> yeah, you, people don't believe it, but the Christ child is here, Donald Trump. He's the dragon of Revelation. Revelation is his testimony. And he is bound by his own word. And he won't break his own word. And that's the magic of it. And we should celebrate him. We don't worship him, yeah, and, uh, but uh, we support him. So you don't have to follow him, just support him. And he'll take care of all the rest. Yeah, this is his millennial reign on earth. That's important. And uh, revelation fulfilled. And yeah, there's worse to come, isn't there? because of the wicked because that's what they have to do to one another just like Hollywood is turning on Hollywood the politicians turning on the politicians the countries turning on the countries the people turning on the people it's like a, it's, a, it's an uncivil war uncivil, it's UN yeah, it all has to be abolished there has to be a, a greater a greater rising within mankind to see the perfection of why we're here yeah. 
that's true. So anyways, uh, <laughs> I feel terrible. I do. And, uh, but I can still express in such a way. Yeah. And it's, it's a little disappointing to kind of deal with YouTube and all that. You know, they're baiting everybody with all this bullshit. And look how easily the, the masses move. For what purpose? Well, I guess to judge one another. It's the um, tribe of Dan. It is. Dan is DNA, the violent man. Yeah, without a doubt, it's inherent in all men. But there are only four horsemen, as there are four winds, as there are four living creatures. And so the architects and everything that's designed is meant to be. And we're in our limitations based on our spectrum, based on what, how we exist in our spectrum light. Because beyond that, it's even greater still. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye.